Well, Target's gone and done it again. Uh, is the red bullseye retailer pissing off customers and driving shoppers away on purpose? I don't know, but maybe. However, not for the reasons you would immediately think, but with respect to what negative press Target received last year and all, you know. And Citizens cancels homeowner insurance policies. They are sending out cancellation notices and leaving folks with a $54,000 bill in the end when it is all said and done. Rent prices are on the rise. Stay tuned because I do have some shocking news to share there. Plus, airlines are doing the unthinkable. And if it's not one thing, then it's another. Doors are falling off mid-flight at 30,000 feet. They are trying to suck out passengers and crew members and flight attendants and stewardesses out of these Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets like from the opening scene of Charlie's Angels. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but go take a look later. Or they are giving away free seats to anyone who would pass as a contestant on My 600 Pound Life. But wait, there's more because it's only getting worse. And I mean, really, what could go wrong with gaining a housemate? if you will, housemate. Stay tuned, stick around because I have something to tell you. Um, and you're not going to want to miss this one because it is quite a story. And basically, well, it's about moving out of an apartment and ditching the forever renter life and buying a house and moving in with two girlfriends instead. Like I said, what could possibly go wrong? So smash the like button, subscribe because this party's about to get buck wild, y'all. I don't know why I put that in there. I just, I wanted to say buck wild in a sentence today. Come over, join me on Patreon, help support the channel. Thank you all in advance. I love you immensely. All right. So Target has been making quite a name for themselves here lately. And I honestly thought 2024, 2024 was going to be a fresh start and a better year for them. But apparently they can't win for losing. And now a woman says I can never go back to my Target again. I feel like that's the face that should be made while saying that that quote after workers laughed at her during a recent shopping haul. So apparently a woman in pursuit of 2024's first real hot ticket consumer item, the Stanley Cup, was happy to secure one at Target. But Daily Dot said it came with a price beyond what she paid at the register. Dun, dun, dun. Like, you know, real aggressive there with that. Now, Megan Fetch Happen, get it? Megan, her name's Megan Fetch Happen, like making Fetch Happen from Mean Girls. No? Okay. Megan Fetch Happen says she fell down on her way to get one of those highly sought after and limited purchase quantity mugs and learned that some of the employees laughed over her misfortune and now she is upset and apparently going to probably boycott the store. She told her followers on TikTok, I got this Stanley Cup, but I can never go back to my target again and this is why. And she compared the crowd of people trying to get their hands on the cups to a stampede. So according to the way she tells it, I'm running through the checkout line try to try to get to the Stanley, she said, and my UGG like catches on the floor and I splatted like a bug on the floor, like completely face planted. I felt like the need to say it that way because UGGs running after Stanley cups and target like it's like a gold bar or something. Okay. She says she still managed to secure a cup, but that she was curious to see what her fall looked like from everyone else's perspective. So she said she went back the next day to see if there was security footage of the misadventure. It was then that she discovered the shocking truth and said several employees went in to view the footage and then came out laughing at her and her unfortunate mishap. She said they told her hysterically, oh, we can't show you, one of the workers said, but you really ate it. Like you really, really fell. Sorry. But wait, there's more because they said it got worse as the frazzled blonde TikToker told it and she claims she went about her shopping and then at the register, another lady is holding on like two Stanleys, like a blue one and a white one that had already had and she's like, Stanley's for sale if you want one, only two left. The woman in her fit of rage then added ruefully, mocking me. I don't know why I felt the need to do the voice with that, but I feel like, I don't know why I feel like that's what goes with that. Anyway, however, she concluded with, and now I'm known as the girl who fell. But in summary, the Daily Dot thoroughly covered the Stanley Cup phenomenon, hi highlighting incidents such as Target shoppers catching employees trying to hide one, a man being tackled during his attempt to secure one, and fights breaking out in lines over them. A cup. A frickin' cup. Like Yeti, but not. A Stanley, but 
worth fighting in lines over. Y'all, I don't understand people these days. NPR described the Stanley brand as a status symbol that hydrates, emphasizing the superior quality of its double wall stainless steel tumblers. These tumblers can keep liquids hot or cold for extended periods, holding up to 64 ounces. And the report also mentions a remarkable story of a Stanley Cup surviving a car fire with ice still inside. I did see that video, which was kind of remarkable. Um, I don't know that it's worth, y'all, I'm sure you can't hear the wind right now. We are now having a little recap, or not a recap, a redo of the storms that went through on Tuesday here in my panhandle part of Florida. Uh, it's not nearly, nearly as bad as it was on Monday night, Tuesday morning, but the winds have picked up significantly. Panama City is supposed to get a little bit more of the uh, damaging winds and rain and hopefully no tornadoes this time so it doesn't look nearly as bad as it did before so fingers crossed that whatever is good whatever system is going through now does not wreak the same havoc that the one on tuesday did all up the east coast so many people with power outages and tornadoes that hit and just destruction debris hail the size of golf balls if you guys saw my video the hail that hit panama city was massive um so hopefully this one is like it's tame super tame super tame little baby counterpart that's just making its way through real quickly and there will be no harm no foul i'm sorry back to where i was with this woman and her star or uh, stanley cup the woman who got laughed at followed up by sharing that she was also lucky enough to get the starbucks uh starbucks x stanley pink cup because they did this uh, whole collaboration thing right and in that video that she uploaded to TikTok, she noted she arrived at the store at 7.30 a.m. and said, my Target passed out tickets. If you were given a ticket, you got a cup. I barely made it. The last two tickets were given right behind me. Again, don't know why the voice, it just feels accurate. Uh, despite her claims of, I can never go back to my Target again, that is obviously entirely untrue because newer videos published since then showed the considerable line at guest services that she waited in to trade her ticket for a cup. So with her caption accompanying the video saying, I didn't even fall this time. Well, that's a plus. But speaking of falling, what isn't falling right now are rent leasing uh, ask and home prices. You'll see how I transitioned to that right there. That's the only transition you'll ever get out of me. Just so we're all fully, fully aware. Uh, because not only did corporate landlords raise tenants rent too much, the Sacramento Bee says, according to a lawsuit, a $3.7 million settlement has been reached. And now millennials are carpooling for homes by, according to Fortune Finance and Housing, teaming up with non-romantic co-buyers because of the disastrous state of the housing market. And another bombshell dropped on a Florida couple after citizens, good old citizens, cancels their Lakeland home insurance policy despite, okay, I hear that word, despite having made almost $60,000 in upgrades. But just to get you folks caught up to speed with the problem we face here in Florida with homeowners insurance policies and premium prices, escalations, hikes, increases, non-renewals, and cancellations. At a quick glance, thousands of Florida homeowners have had their property insurance policies dropped in recent months. And for many, finding new coverage can be costly and stressful, in case you're not aware, stressful, taking a toll on physical and mental health. But even with state-run Citizens Property Insurance Corporation, acceptance is not guaranteed, okay? With devastating rejection notices, including statements like, here we go, property is not eligible for coverage because the roofing system is not acceptable. That's a multiple tens of thousand dollar problem that would have to be fixed. And trust me, we know. Insurance agents are saying how the market is the worst it has been in all the years I have been doing this. And in summary, for seven months, this couple, Bill and Ann Sargent, were in a twilight zone, unsure if they would have homeowner's insurance despite completely re-roofing and rewiring their 1925 home on Cleveland Heights Boulevard. But their Orwellian odyssey began at the end of May when AAA Insurance notified them that it was canceling their policy, even though Ann Sargent never made a single claim in more than 50 years as a client. Basically, they were getting their money and never had to reimburse it to them in the form of any kind of claim, and yet they still dropped them. According to an analysis by the Insurance Information Institute, Florida homeowners now pay an average of 6,000 a year for property insurance. That is 42% higher than 2022 when Floridians paid just around $4,300 and more than triple the US average of $1,700. 
Now I am curious what you guys are paying for homeowner's insurance in whatever city or state you live in. If you want to leave it in the comments, feel free. If not, no harm, no foul. The rates have gone so high that the Insurance Information Institute says 15 to 20% of Florida homeowners are foregoing coverage, known as going bare, uh, nearly double the national average of 7 to 12%. So back in August of last year, 2023, the couple paid, mm, 2023, yeah, couple paid total home roofing $21,300 for a brand new roof on their home front and back porches, and a detached garage. They also paid Lumen Electric $34,574 for a complete home rewiring, not just a few minor repairs to bring it up to code. Finally, they paid Allen Dyer uh, inspections $150 for a four-point inspection of the roof and major systems, all of which passed. It got really bright in here for a second. I don't know what that was. I don't know if y'all saw that on screen, but it, it got really bright for a second. That was weird. All right, let's get back to where we were. Um, and still, after having spent nearly $56,000 on upgrades, the sergeants were, re were relieved when Kendrick informed them on November 1st that they had been approved by citizens for coverage. And they promptly sent citizens the full year's premium of $5,775. But it did not end there. No sunshine or rainbows or happy endings to this story, unfortunately. Instead, the fairy tale maid uh, had extreme plot twists, and on December 20th, the sergeants received a welcome aboard letter from Citizens Insurance. But ironically, on the very same day, they also received letters from Citizens saying the policy has been canceled effective January 7th. And the reason is absolutely nuts. Ridiculous. They said, the reason for this action is, Property is not eligible for coverage because the roofing system is not acceptable. If you have any questions, contact your agent, the letter from Citizens read. Bill Sargent said it was explained to him that Citizens automatically accepts clients and takes their payment before checking the property for eligibility. But it only gets worse because they are limited in what they could do. And now Citizens is the last resort. And if they won't take it, I can't imagine who would, they have said. And ultimately, there's nothing we can do to make them keep the policy. So through the holidays, the couple fretted and worried, of course. Bill Sargent spent time in the emergency room for the stress as the sergeants continued to call Citizens desperate for answers. But all they got was more runaround and being put on hold and transferred from one department representative to another. At least there was a real person on that end, right? At one point, they were even told their roof lacked steady grounding. And the sergeant said, and no one could tell them what steady grounding even meant. That, that's funny to me. But the sad ending to the story is Michael Peltier, Citizens Communications Director, messaged on a Friday, okay, that he thought he would have some good news for the sergeants. But by 5.30 p.m. of that very same Friday, they had not heard from him. And that was because apparently uh, Peltier himself had not heard back from the underwriters in his office yet. But in the meantime, a different Citizens Customer Service representative told the sergeants on Friday that if they could submit four items before midnight on Saturday, they could be reinstated. They needed to submit a completed roof permit, okay? All photos by roofer, not by them, but by the roofer, all paid in full invoices, and an updated backyard view of the house showing that the carpet, carport had been cleared. All of this needed to be done. It's after 5.30 p.m. on Friday, and they need all of this by midnight on Saturday. Saturday, interesting. Bill Sargent said, she said if the policy is canceled, it can be reinstated when the required documentation is submitted, so it ain't over till it's over. But despite his recent health struggles, he and Ann spent Saturday boxing up what was on the carport and putting it away in his studio. Over the weekend, the couple received a check from citizens for more than $250 with a message saying it was for an overpayment. And on Monday morning, the sergeant spoke with a third citizens customer service representative and were told that a re rescission of their cancellation notice was put in the mail on Friday afternoon. So after seven months of costly repairs, approval, rejection, and hours on hold, they now have insurance again, luckily. And from what I read, Bill Sargent, a man who never mints his words, summed up their uh, experience in that of so many others in Florida in dealing with property insurance these days as one long dragged out calamitous cluster. Y'all can finish that word. But this is happening all over the country and homeowners are not the only ones feeling the pain because another story coming out of California shared how a corporate landlord raised the rent for nearly 2,000 homes in California by too much and broke the law in doing so. 
but renting can be a nightmare. And for many, they consider renting as just throwing your money away each and every month. So no wonder people are trying out, uh, trying to get out now and buy a house. But the problem there lies in high mortgage interest rates and even higher listed asking home prices. But there is a solution, sort of, depending on what you're willing to do. Millennials are now carpooling for homes by teaming up with non-romantic co-buyers because of this disastrous state of the housing market according to Fortune. And a new study shows that 15% of Americans have co-purchased a home with a person other than their romantic partner, and another 48% would consider it. How about you guys? So let me know in the comments, would you buy a house with a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a mix of the two if it meant you could begin to capture a piece of the American dream of home ownership, possibly accrue a growing equity stake, take advantage of tax incentives from mortgage interest so long as you itemize and don't just opt for the standard deduction. I'm curious, was this something you would do? It's a different take on the um, generational living where you've got grandparents, parents, and children, and, and maybe even extra children after that, like their kids, so the great grandparents, grandparents, whatever. Now you have the possibility of however many friends getting together to try to go in on a mortgage together or even on a rental place together in order to be able to afford a home, mostly mortgages. But how does that really work out in the long run? You know what I mean? We worried about um, generational living with everybody having to move back into mom's house and grandma's house and whoever else is over the last couple of years due to everything that was going on and inflation. And now those younger than us, I say us because I feel like you guys, most of my audience is my age or older. Those younger than us are faced with all different challenges of trying to figure out how to afford even a starter home, a new home. The things that I could do and you could do back in the day with our first home purchases, it's almost impossible these days with the cost of the houses, the cost of interest rates. Um, I know before, back in you know 80s and before that, interest rates were higher, but home prices were significantly, significantly lower, and it was much easier to purchase a home. Now, with house prices through the roof, interest rates through the roof, and people being laid off left and right. It's very hard to have that American dream of owning your own home, white picket fence, all that fun stuff. So I can see why there's so many people that are willing to, hey, friends, let's get this mortgage together and, and work it out. Is that something you would be willing to do? Whether it's, you know, at this stage of your life or at this age, or if you were younger, I'm just curious if that's something you see as a, as a um, realistic solution to this housing crisis that is hitting a lot of people from every age bracket, 18 up to 98, you know what I'm saying? Like it's hitting everybody. Nobody is immune. That's a word I was looking for earlier today. Nobody is immune to this housing crisis, except for maybe that one percenter uh, group, but whatever. So I'm curious if you would do it or not. I look forward to reading your comments. Squirrel Tribe, I love you immensely. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.